A blog, a truncation of the expression weblog, is a discussion or informational website published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete, often informal diary-style text entries, posts. Posts are typically displayed in reverse chronological order, so that the most recent post appears first, at the top of the web page. Until 2009, blogs were usually the work of a single individual, occasionally of a small group, and often covered a single subject or topic. In the 2010s, multi-author blogs MABs emerged, featuring the writing of multiple authors and sometimes professionally edited. MABs from newspapers, other media outlets, universities, think tanks, advocacy groups, and similar institutions account for an increasing quantity of blog traffic. The rise of Twitter and other microblogging systems helps integrate MABs and single author blogs into the news media. Blog can also be used as a verb, meaning to maintain or add content to a blog. The emergence and growth of blogs in the late 1990s coincided with the advent of web publishing tools that facilitated the posting of content by non-technical users who did not have much experience with HTML or computer programming. Previously, a knowledge of such technologies as HTML and file transfer protocol had been required to publish content on the web, and early web users therefore tended to be hackers and computer enthusiasts. In the 2010s, the majority are interactive Web 2.0 websites, allowing visitors to leave online comments, and it is this interactivity that distinguishes them from other static websites. In that sense, blogging can be seen as a form of social networking service. Indeed, bloggers do not only produce content to post on their blogs, but also often build social relations with their readers and other bloggers. However, there are high readership blogs which do not allow comments. Many blogs provide commentary on a particular subject or topic, ranging from politics to sports. Others function as more personal online diaries, and others function more as online brand advertising of a particular individual or company. A typical blog combines text, digital images, and links to other blogs, web pages, and other media related to its topic. The ability of readers to leave publicly viewable comments, and interact with other commenters, is an important contribution to the popularity of many blogs. However, blog owners or authors often moderate and filter online comments to remove hate speech or other offensive content. Most blogs are primarily textual, although some focus on art, art blogs, photographs, photo blogs, videos, video blogs or vlogs, music, MP3 blogs, and audio podcasts. In education, blogs can be used as instructional resources. These blogs are referred to as edublogs. Microblogging is another type of blogging, featuring very short posts. On 16 February 2011, there were over 156 million public blogs in existence. On 20 February 2014, there were around 172 million Tumblr and 75.8 million WordPress blogs in existence worldwide. According to critics and other bloggers, Blogger is the most popular blogging service used today. However, Blogger does not offer public statistics. Technorati lists 1.3 million blogs as of February 22, 2014. Topic: History. The term weblog was coined by Jorn Barger on the 17th of December 1997. The short form blog was coined by Peter Merholtz, who jokingly broke the word weblog into the phrase we blog in the sidebar of his blog peterme.com in April or May 1999. Shortly thereafter, Evan Williams at Pyra Labs used blog as both a noun and verb, to blog, meaning to edit one's weblog or to post to one's weblog, and devised the term blogger. In connection with Pyra Labs Blogger product, leading to the popularization of the terms. <laughs> 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 
Topic Origins. Before blogging became popular, digital communities took many forms including Usenet, commercial online services such as Genie, Byte Information Exchange and the early CompuServe, email lists, and bulletin board systems BBS. In the 1990s, Internet forum software created running conversations with «threads». Threads are topical connections between messages on a virtual «corkboard». From 14 June 1993, Mosaic Communications Corporation maintained their What's New list of new websites, updated daily and archived monthly. The page was accessible by a special What's New button in the Mosaic web browser. The earliest instance of a commercial blog was on the first business to consumer website created in 1995 by Thai, Inc., which featured a blog in a section called Online Diary. The entries were maintained by featured beanie babies that were voted for monthly by website visitors. The modern blog evolved from the Online Diary, where people would keep a running account of the events in their personal lives. Most such writers called themselves diarists, journalists, or journalers. Justin Hall, who began personal blogging in 1994 while a student at Swarthmore College, is generally recognized as one of the earlier bloggers, as is Jerry Purnell. Dave Weiner's scripting news is also credited with being one of the older and longer-running weeblogs. The Australian NetGuide magazine maintained the Daily Net News on their website from 1996. Daily Net News ran links and daily reviews of new websites, mostly in Australia. Another early blog was Wearable Wireless Webcam, an online shared diary of a person's personal life combining text, digital video, and digital pictures transmitted live from a wearable computer and ITAP device to a website in 1994. This practice of semi-automated blogging with live video together with text was referred to as surveillance, and such journals were also used as evidence in legal matters. Some early bloggers, such as the misanthropic bitch, who began in 1997, actually referred to their online presence as a zine, before the term blog entered common usage. Technology. Early blogs were simply manually updated components of common websites. In 1995, the ''Online Diary'' on the Thai, Inc. website was produced and updated manually before any blogging programs were available. Posts were made to appear in reverse chronological order by manually updating text-based HTML code using FTP software in real time several times a day. To users, this offered the appearance of a live diary that contained multiple new entries per day. At the beginning of each new day, new diary entries were manually coded into a new HTML file, and the start of each month, diary entries were archived into its own folder which contained a separate HTML page for every day of the month. Then menus that contained links to the most recent diary entry were updated manually throughout the site. This text-based method of organizing thousands of files served as a springboard to define future blogging styles that were captured by blogging software developed years later. The evolution of electronic and software tools to facilitate the production and maintenance of web articles posted in reverse chronological order made the publishing process feasible to a much larger and less technically inclined population. Ultimately, this resulted in the distinct class of online publishing that produces blogs we recognize today. For instance, the use of some sort of browser-based software is now a typical aspect of blogging. Blogs can be hosted by dedicated blog hosting services, on regular web hosting services, or run using blog software. Rise in popularity After a slow start, blogging rapidly gained in popularity. Blog usage spread during 1999 and the years following, being further popularized by the near-simultaneous arrival of the first hosted blog tools. 
Bruce Abelson launched Open Diary in October 1998, which soon grew to thousands of online diaries. Open Diary innovated the reader comment, becoming the first blog community where readers could add comments to other writers' blog entries. Brad Fitzpatrick started LiveJournal in March 1999. Andrew Smales created PETAs.com in July 1999 as an easier alternative to maintaining a news page on a website, followed by Diaryland in September 1999, focusing more on a personal diary community. Evan Williams and Meg Aurihan Pyra Labs launched Blogger. Com in August 1999, purchased by Google in February 2003. Topic: <laughs> Political impact. An early milestone in the rise in importance of blogs came in 2002, when many bloggers focused on comments by U.S. Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott. Senator Lott, at a party honoring U.S. Senator Strom Thurmond, praised Senator Thurmond by suggesting that the United States would have been better off had Thurmond been elected president. Lott's critics saw these comments as a tacit approval of racial segregation, a policy advocated by Thurmond's 1948 presidential campaign. This view was reinforced by documents and recorded interviews dug up by bloggers. See Josh Marshall's Talking Points memo. Though Lott's comments were made at a public event attended by the media, no major media organizations reported on his controversial comments until after blogs broke the story. Blogging helped to create a political crisis that forced Lott to step down as majority leader. Similarly, blogs were among the driving forces behind the Rathergate scandal. To wit, television journalist Dan Rather presented documents on the CBS show 60 Minutes that conflicted with accepted accounts of President Bush's military service record. Bloggers declared the documents to be forgeries and presented evidence and arguments in support of that view. Consequently, CBS apologized for what it said were inadequate reporting techniques see Little Green Footballs. Many bloggers view this scandal as the advent of blogs acceptance by the mass media, both as a news source and opinion and as means of applying political pressure. The impact of these stories gave greater credibility to blogs as a medium of news dissemination. Though often seen as partisan gossips, bloggers sometimes lead the way in bringing key information to public light, with mainstream media having to follow their lead. More often, however, news blogs tend to react to material already published by the mainstream media. Meanwhile, an increasing number of experts blogged, making blogs a source of in-depth analysis. In Russia, some political bloggers have started to challenge the dominance of official, overwhelmingly pro-government media. Bloggers such as Rustam Adagamov and Alexei Navalny have many followers, and the latter's nickname for the ruling United Russia Party as the Party of Crooks and Thieves has been adopted by anti-regime protesters. This led to the Wall Street Journal calling Navalny, "...the man Vladimir Putin fears most," in March 2012. <laughs> <laughs> Mainstream popularity By 2004, the role of blogs became increasingly mainstream, as political consultants, news services, and candidates began using them as tools for outreach and opinion forming. Blogging was established by politicians and political candidates to express opinions on war and other issues and cemented blogs' role as a news source. See Howard Dean and Wesley Clark. Even politicians not actively campaigning, such as the UK's Labour Party's MP Tom Watson, began to blog to bond with constituents. In January 2005, Fortune magazine listed eight bloggers whom business people could not ignore. Peter Rojas, Zini Jardin, Ben Trott, Mina Trott, Jonathan Schwartz, Jason Goldman, Robert Scoble, and Jason Calacanis. Israel was among the first national governments to set up an official blog. 
Under David Saranga, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs became active in adopting Web 2.0 initiatives, including an official video blog and a political blog. The Foreign Ministry also held a microblogging press conference via Twitter about its war with Hamas, with Saranga answering questions from the public in common text messaging abbreviations during a live worldwide press conference. The questions and answers were later posted on Israel Politic, the country's official political blog. The impact of blogging upon the mainstream media has also been acknowledged by governments. In 2009, the presence of the American journalism industry had declined to the point that several newspaper corporations were filing for bankruptcy, resulting in less direct competition between newspapers within the same circulation area. Discussion emerged as to whether the newspaper industry would benefit from a stimulus package by the federal government. U.S. President Barack Obama acknowledged the emerging influence of blogging upon society by saying if the direction of the news is all blogosphere, all opinions, with no serious fact-checking, no serious attempts to put stories in context, then what you will end up getting is people shouting at each other across the void but not a lot of mutual understanding. Between 2009 and 2012, an Orwell Prize for blogging was awarded. Types There are many different types of blogs, differing not only in the type of content, but also in the way that content is delivered or written. Personal blogs the personal blog is an ongoing online diary or commentary written by an individual, rather than a corporation or organization. While the vast majority of personal blogs attract very few readers, other than the blogger's immediate family and friends, a small number of personal blogs have become popular, to the point that they have attracted lucrative advertising sponsorship. A tiny number of personal bloggers have become famous, both in the online community and in the real world, collaborative blogs or group blogs. A type of weblog in which posts are written and published by more than one author. The majority of high-profile collaborative blogs are based around a single uniting theme, such as politics, technology or advocacy. In recent years, the blogosphere has seen the emergence and growing popularity of more collaborative efforts, often set up by already established bloggers wishing to pool time and resources, both to reduce the pressure of maintaining a popular website and to attract a larger readership. Microblogging Microblogging is the practice of posting small pieces of digital content which could be text, pictures, links, short videos, or other media on the Internet. Microblogging offers a portable communication mode that feels organic and spontaneous to many users. It has captured the public imagination, in part because the short posts are easy to read on the go or when waiting. Friends use it to keep in touch, business associates use it to coordinate meetings or share useful resources, and celebrities and politicians or their publicists microblog about concert dates, lectures, book releases, or tour schedules. A wide and growing range of add-on tools enables sophisticated updates and interaction with other applications. The resulting profusion of functionality is helping to define new possibilities for this type of communication. Examples of these include Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr and, by far the largest, Weibo, corporate and organizational blogs. A blog can be private, as in most cases, or it can be for business or not-for-profit organization or government purposes. Blogs used internally, and only available to employees via an intranet are called corporate blogs. Companies use internal corporate blogs enhance the communication, culture and employee engagement in a corporation. Internal corporate blogs can be used to communicate news about company policies or procedures, build employee esprit de corps and improve morale. Companies and other organizations also use external, publicly accessible blogs for marketing, branding, or public relations purposes. 
Some organizations have a blog authored by their executive. In practice, many of these executive blog posts are penned by a ghostwriter, who makes posts in the style of the credited author. Similar blogs for clubs and societies are called club blogs, group blogs, or by similar names. Typical use is to inform members and other interested parties of club and member activities. Aggregated blogs. Individuals or organization may aggregate selected feeds on specific topic, product or service and provide combined view for its readers. This allows readers to concentrate on reading instead of searching for quality on topic content and managing subscriptions. Many such aggregation called planets from name of planet software that perform such aggregation hosting sites usually have planet subdomain in domain name like http colon slash slash planet dot gnome dot org slash closing parenthesis by genre some blogs focus on a particular subject, such as political blogs, journalism blogs, health blogs, travel blogs also known as travelogues, gardening blogs, house blogs, book blogs, fashion blogs, beauty blogs, lifestyle blogs, party blogs, wedding blogs, photography blogs, project blogs, psychology blogs, sociology blogs, education blogs, niche blogs, classical music blogs, quizzing blogs, legal blogs often referred to as a blogs, or dream logs. How-to, tutorial blogs are becoming increasing popular. Two common types of genre blogs are art blogs and music blogs. A blog featuring discussions especially about home and family is not uncommonly called a mom blog and one made popular is by Erica Diamond who created WomenOnTheFence.com which is syndicated to over 2 million readers monthly. While not a legitimate type of blog, one used for the sole purpose of spamming is known as a splog, by media type. A blog comprising videos is called a vlog, one comprising links is called a linklog, a site containing a portfolio of sketches is called a sketchblog or one comprising photos is called a photoblog. Blogs with shorter posts and mixed media types are called tumblelogs. Blogs that are written on typewriters and then scanned are called typecast or typecast blogs. A rare type of blog hosted on the Gopher protocol is known as a flog, by device. A blog can also be defined by which type of device is used to compose it. A blog written by a mobile device like a mobile phone or PDA could be called a moblog. One early blog was Wearable Wireless Webcam, an online shared diary of a person's personal life combining text, video, and pictures transmitted live from a wearable computer and ITAP device to a website. This practice of semi-automated blogging with live video together with text was referred to as surveillance. Such journals have been used as evidence in legal matters. Reverse blog. A reverse blog is composed by its users rather than a single blogger. This system has the characteristics of a blog, and the writing of several authors. These can be written by several contributing authors on a topic, or opened up for anyone to write. There is typically some limit to the number of entries to keep it from operating like a web forum. Community and cataloging Blogosphere The collective community of all blogs and blog authors, particularly notable and widely read blogs, is known as the blogosphere. Since all blogs are on the Internet by definition, they may be seen as interconnected and socially networked, through bloggerolls, comments, linkbacks, reefbacks, trackbacks or pingbacks, and backlinks. Discussions in the blogosphere", are occasionally used by the media as a gauge of public opinion on various issues. Because new, untapped communities of bloggers and their readers can emerge in the space of a few years, Internet marketers pay close attention to "...trends in the blogosphere", blog search engines. Several blog search engines have been used to search blog contents, such as Bloglines, Blogscope, and Technorati. Technorati was one of the more popular blog search engines, but the website stopped indexing blogs and assigning authority scores in May 2014. 
The research community is working on going beyond simple keyword search, by inventing new ways to navigate through huge amounts of information present in the blogosphere, as demonstrated by projects like Blogscope, which was shut down in 2012, blogging communities and directories. Several online communities exist that connect people to blogs and bloggers to other bloggers. Some of these communities include Indoblogger, Blogada, Blog Chatter, Blog Catalog, and MyBlogLog. Interest specific blogging platforms are also available. For instance, Blogster has a sizable community of political bloggers among its members. Global Voices aggregates international bloggers, with emphasis on voices that are not ordinarily heard in international mainstream media. Blogging and advertising. It is common for blogs to feature banner advertisements or promotional content, either to financially benefit the blogger, support website hosting costs, or to promote the blogger's favorite causes or products. The popularity of blogs has also given rise to «fake blogs», in which a company will create a fictional blog as a marketing tool to promote a product. As the popularity of blogging continues to rise, the commercialization of blogging is rapidly increasing. Many corporations and companies collaborate with bloggers to increase advertising and engage online communities towards their products. In the book Fans, Bloggers, and Gamers, Henry Jenkins stated that bloggers take knowledge in their own hands, enabling successful navigation within and between these emerging knowledge cultures. One can see such behavior as co-optation into commodity culture insofar as it sometimes collaborates with corporate interests, but one can also see it as increasing the diversity of media culture, providing opportunities for greater inclusiveness, and making more responsive to consumers. <laughs> Popularity As of 2008, blogging had become such a mania that a new blog was created every second of every minute of every hour of every day. Researchers have actively analyzed the dynamics of how blogs become popular. There are essentially two measures of this, popularity through citations, as well as popularity through affiliation i.e., bloggerole. The basic conclusion from studies of the structure of blogs is that while it takes time for a blog to become popular through bloggerols, permalinks can boost popularity more quickly, and are perhaps more indicative of popularity and authority than bloggerols, since they denote that people are actually reading the blog's content and deem it valuable or noteworthy in specific cases. The Blogdex project was launched by researchers in the MIT Media Lab to crawl the web and gather data from thousands of blogs in order to investigate their social properties. Information was gathered by the tool for over four years, during which it autonomously tracked the most contagious information spreading in the blog community, ranking it by recency and popularity. It can, therefore, be considered the first instantiation of a meme tracker. The project was replaced by Tailrank.com which in turn has been replaced by Spin3R.com. Blogs are given rankings by Alexa Internet web hits of Alexa toolbar users, and formerly by blog search engine Technorati based on the number of incoming links Technorati stopped doing this in 2014. In August 2006, Technorati found that the most linked to blog on the Internet was that of Chinese actress Xu Jinglei. Chinese media Xinhua reported that this blog received more than 50 million page views, claiming it to be the most popular blog in the world. Technorati rated Boing Boing to be the most read group written blog. Topic blurring with the mass media Many bloggers, particularly those engaged in participatory journalism, are amateur journalists, and thus they differentiate themselves from the professional reporters and editors who work in mainstream media organizations. Other bloggers are media professionals who are publishing online, rather than via a TV station or newspaper, either as an add-on to a traditional media presence e.g., hosting a radio show or writing a column in a paper newspaper, or as their sole journalistic output. 
Some institutions and organizations see blogging as a means of getting around the filter of media gatekeepers and pushing their messages directly to the public. Many mainstream journalists, meanwhile, write their own blogs, well over 300, according to cyberjournalist.net's J blog list. The first known use of a blog on a news site was in August 1998, when Jonathan Dube of the Charlotte Observer published one chronicling Hurricane Bonnie. Some bloggers have moved over to other media. The following bloggers and others have appeared on radio and television: Duncan Black, known widely by his pseudonym Atrios, Glenn Reynolds, Instapundit, Marcos Molitzis Zuniga, Daily Kos, Alex Stefan, World Changing, Anna Marie Cox, Wonket, Nate Silver, 538.com, and Ezra Klein, Ezra Klein Blog in the American Prospect, now in the Washington Post. In counterpoint, Hugh Hewitt exemplifies a mass media personality who has moved in the other direction, adding to his reach in old media by being an influential blogger. Similarly, it was emergency preparedness and safety tips on air and online blog articles that captured Surgeon General of the United States Richard Carmona's attention and earned his kudos for the associated broadcasts by talk show host Lisa Toliver and Westchester Emergency Volunteer Reserves Medical Reserve Corps Director Marianne Partridge. Blogs have also had an influence on minority languages, bringing together scattered speakers and learners. This is particularly so with blogs in Gaelic languages. Minority language publishing which may lack economic feasibility can find its audience through inexpensive blogging. There are examples of bloggers who have published books based on their blogs, e.g., Salam Pax, Ellen Simonetti, Jessica Cutler, Scrappleface. Blog-based books have been given the name Bluke. A prize for the best blog based book was initiated in 2005, the Lulu Blucher Prize. However, success has been elusive offline, with many of these books not selling as well as their blogs. The book based on Julie Powell's blog, The Julie, Julia Project, was made into the film Julie and Julia, apparently the first to do so. Consumer-generated advertising Consumer-generated advertising is a relatively new and controversial development, and it has created a new model of marketing communication from businesses to consumers. Among the various forms of advertising on blog, the most controversial are the sponsored posts. These are blog entries or posts and may be in the form of feedback, reviews, opinion, videos, etc. and usually contain a link back to the desired site using a keyword or several keywords. Blogs have led to some disintermediation and a breakdown of the traditional advertising model, where companies can skip over the advertising agencies previously the only interface with the customer and contact the customers directly via social media websites. On the other hand, new companies specialized in blog advertising have been established, to take advantage of this new development as well. However, there are many people who look negatively on this new development. Some believe that any form of commercial activity on blogs will destroy the blogosphere's credibility. Topic: <laughs> Creating a blog To create a blog, one can use popular blogging platforms like WordPress and Blogger, both of which have free plans. <laughs> Legal and social consequences Blogging can result in a range of legal liabilities and other unforeseen consequences. Topic. Defamation or liability Several cases have been brought before the national courts against bloggers concerning issues of defamation or liability. U.S. payouts related to blogging totaled $17.4 million by 2009, in some cases these have been covered by umbrella insurance. The courts have returned with mixed verdicts. 
Internet service providers ISPs, in general, are immune from liability for information that originates with third parties US. Communications Decency Act and the EU Directive 2031 EC. In Doe v. Cahill, the Delaware Supreme Court held that stringent standards had to be met to unmask the anonymous bloggers, and also took the unusual step of dismissing the libel case itself as unfounded under American libel law rather than referring it back to the trial court for reconsideration. In a bizarre twist, the Cahills were able to obtain the identity of John Doe, who turned out to be the person they suspected, the town's mayor, Councilman Cahill's political rival. The Cahills amended their original complaint, and the mayor settled the case rather than going to trial. In January 2007, two prominent Malaysian political bloggers, Jeff Uwe and Aharuddin Adan, were sued by a pro-government newspaper, the New Straits Times Press Malaysia Burhad, Kalimullah bin Mashirul Hassan, Hashamuddin bin An and Brendan John A. L. John Pereira over an alleged defamation. The plaintiff was supported by the Malaysian government. Following the suit, the Malaysian government proposed to register all bloggers in Malaysia in order to better control parties against their interest. This is the first such legal case against bloggers in the country. In the United States, blogger Aaron Wall was sued by Traffic Power for defamation and publication of trade secrets in 2005. According to Wired magazine, Traffic Power had been banned from Google for allegedly rigging search engine results. Wall and other white hat search engine optimization consultants had exposed Traffic Power in what they claim was an effort to protect the public. The case was dismissed for lack of personal jurisdiction, and Traffic Power failed to appeal within the allowed time. In 2009, NDTV issued a legal notice to Indian blogger Kunte for a blog post criticizing their coverage of the Mumbai attacks. The blogger unconditionally withdrew his post, which resulted in several Indian bloggers criticizing NDTV for trying to silence critics. Employment Employees who blog about elements of their place of employment can begin to affect the reputation of their employer, either in a positive way, if the employee is praising the employer and its workplaces, or in a negative way, if the blogger is making negative comments about the company or its practices. In general, attempts by employee bloggers to protect themselves by maintaining anonymity have proved ineffective. In 2009, a controversial and landmark decision by the Honorable. Mr. Justice Eady refused to grant an order to protect the anonymity of Richard Horton. Horton was a police officer in the United Kingdom who blogged about his job under the name, Nightjack. Delta Air Lines fired flight attendant Ellen Simonetti because she posted photographs of herself in uniform on an airplane and because of comments posted on her blog, Queen of Sky, Diary of a Flight Attendant, which the employer deemed inappropriate. This case highlighted the issue of personal blogging and freedom of expression versus employer rights and responsibilities, and so it received wide media attention. Simonetti took legal action against the airline for wrongful termination, defamation of character and lost future wages. The suit was postponed while Delta was in bankruptcy proceedings. In early 2006, Eric Ringmar, a senior lecturer at the London School of Economics, was ordered by the convener of his department to take down and destroy his blog in which he discussed the quality of education at the school, Mark Jen was terminated in 2005 after 10 days of employment as an assistant product manager at Google for discussing corporate secrets on his personal blog, then called 99 Zeros and hosted on the Google-owned blogger service. He blogged about unreleased products and company finances a week before the company's earnings announcement. He was fired two days after he complied with his employer's request to remove the sensitive material from his blog. In India, blogger Gaurav Sabnas resigned from IBM after his posts questioned the claims made by a management school. Jessica Cutler, aka 
The Washingtonian blogged about her sex life while employed as a congressional assistant. After the blog was discovered and she was fired, she wrote a novel based on her experiences and blog, The Washingtonian, a novel. As of 2006, Cutler is being sued by one of her former lovers in a case that could establish the extent to which bloggers are obligated to protect the privacy of their real life associates. Catherine Sanderson, a.k.a. Petite Anglaise, lost her job in Paris at a British accountancy firm because of blogging. Although given in the blog in a fairly anonymous manner, some of the descriptions of the firm and some of its people were less than flattering. Sanderson later won a compensation claim case against the British firm, however, on the other hand, Penelope Trunk wrote an upbeat article in the Boston Globe in 2006, entitled, "'Blogs' Essential to a Good Career". She was one of the first journalists to point out that a large portion of bloggers are professionals and that a well-written blog can help attract employers. Topic. Business owners Business owners who blog about their business can also run into legal consequences. Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, was fined during the 2006 NBA playoffs for criticizing NBA officials on the court and in his blog. Topic. Political dangers Blogging can sometimes have unforeseen consequences in politically sensitive areas. In some countries, Internet police or secret police may monitor blogs and arrest blog authors of commentators. Blogs can be much harder to control than broadcast or print media, because a person can create a blog whose authorship is hard to trace, by using anonymity technology such as Tor. As a result, totalitarian and authoritarian regimes often seek to suppress blogs and or to punish those who maintain them. In Singapore, two ethnic Chinese individuals were imprisoned under the country's anti-sedition law for posting anti-Muslim remarks in their blogs. Egyptian blogger Karim Amer was charged with insulting the Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak and an Islamic institution through his blog. It is the first time in the history of Egypt that a blogger was prosecuted. After a brief trial session that took place in Alexandria, the blogger was found guilty and sentenced to prison terms of three years for insulting Islam and inciting sedition, and one year for insulting Mubarak. Egyptian blogger Abdel Monam Mahmoud was arrested in April 2007 for anti-government writings in his blog. Monam is a member of the then banned Muslim Brotherhood. After the 2011 Egyptian Revolution, the Egyptian blogger Michael Nabil Sanad was charged with insulting the military for an article he wrote on his personal blog and sentenced to three years. After expressing opinions in his personal blog about the state of the Sudanese armed forces, Jan Pronk, United Nations Special Representative for the Sudan, was given three days' notice to leave Sudan. The Sudanese army had demanded his deportation. In Myanmar, Ne Phone Lat, a blogger, was sentenced to 20 years in jail for posting a cartoon critical of head of state then Shui. Personal safety One consequence of blogging is the possibility of online or in person attacks or threats against the blogger, sometimes without apparent reason. In some cases, bloggers have faced cyberbullying. Kathy Sierra, author of the blog, Creating Passionate Users, was the target of threats and misogynistic insults to the point that she cancelled her keynote speech at a technology conference in San Diego, fearing for her safety. While a blogger's anonymity is often tenuous, Internet trolls who would attack a blogger with threats or insults can be emboldened by the anonymity of the online environment, where some users are known only by a pseudonymous username, e.g., Hacker1984. Sierra and supporters initiated an online discussion aimed at countering abusive online behavior and developed a blogger's code of conduct, which set out a rules for behavior in the online space. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Behavior. The Blogger's Code of Conduct is a proposal by Tim O'Reilly for bloggers to enforce civility on their blogs by being civil themselves and moderating comments on their blog. The code was proposed in 2007 due to threats made to blogger Kathy Sierra. The idea of the code was first reported by BBC News, who quoted O'Reilly saying, I do think we need some code of conduct around what is acceptable behavior, I would hope that it doesn't come through any kind of regulation it would come through self-regulation." O'Reilly and others came up with a list of seven proposed ideas. Take responsibility not just for your own words, but for the comments you allow on your blog. Label your tolerance level for abusive comments. Consider eliminating anonymous comments. Ignore the trolls. Take the conversation offline, and talk directly, or find an intermediary who can do so. If you know someone who is behaving badly, tell them so. Don't say anything online that you wouldn't say in person. These ideas were predictably intensely discussed on the web and in the media. While the Internet has continued to grow, with online activity and discourse only picking up both in positive and negative ways in terms of blog interaction, the proposed code has drawn more widespread attention to the necessity of monitoring blogging activity and social norms being as important online as offline. See also